Pills and Art Harris, investigative journalist, artharris.com, more pills. Pat, I'll tell you, this is the latest in a very dysfunctional family, and it shows that the police are no longer keeping their strategy close to the vest. They are not just targeting Misty, but her whole family. And if they can keep them in jail long enough, they're hoping that somebody will point something out against the other. Mark, stay on the phone with me, okay? Oh my God, my leg and my arm are so bad. Do you need an ambulance? I think so. Oh, no. I'm not too drunk. Oh my God. <laughs> my pants is ripped in there, so I can't, I can't move it. I can't move it. Okay, stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Art Harris, was that 911 event after the disappearance of Misty? Excuse me, of Haley? It sure was. That was uh, several weeks ago, Pat, when she was with two other young women and they were cruising a very bad neighborhood. Uh, one went in purportedly to find a dealer and came back with a couple of guys who roughed up Misty and yanked her purse and she was very, very distraught. She was hurt. She went to the hospital and uh, was treated for minor injuries and released. But you can hear the tone, the, the actual, the anguish in her voice, which some have, have said is, is far more genuine than the 911 call on the night that uh, she reported Haley missing. And Art Harris, investigative journalist, uh, she waits a half hour. Police say she's inconsistent in what she has to say. Quickly, what are those inconsistencies? Well, she uh, keeps changing aspects of her story, Pat, uh, from what the kids were watching in the way of movies, where the, the movie changer was, could Misty, could, uh, you know, could Haley have, have changed it herself by climbing high up on this, this dresser, uh, which would have been impossible. Uh, there, are, there are a number that did she wash uh, a blanket that she said uh, Haley had possibly uh, soiled. Uh, there are a number of, of questions here, including l a letter that later surfaced uh, from her good friend, her, a party pal she was with the weekend before she went missing, that raised the question that she went to a party with Haley and she accidentally overdosed on Oxycontin and her body was tossed by someone else into the pond. This has not been corroborated. There's no evidence of this other than a letter by this party pal who has since moved in with Misty and her family. Ugh. All the nice clothes and the hair and the makeup and the nails and the whole thing, Art Harris. What about that? Pat, I can tell you that uh, this uh, surfaced when Misty was was taken from from town to get out of town because Tim Miller of Texas Equisearch was afraid that because Ronald had had appeared to be very angry and possibly violent that the only source of information for what happened might disappear if they didn't get Misty out of town. He assigned a volunteer, Donna Brock, to take her to Orlando. They spent several days together. She had her hair done, her nails done, and was really pampered. I'll call Donna her undercover mama. The idea was to have her get close to Misty and see if in this environment she might reveal something she hadn't at that point. You remember she had, quote, flunked this polygraph that Tim Miller had set up, a voice stress analysis, uh, although she maintains she did not. This was something that even the police knew about and that they were they were if not hopeful open to hearing about so Harris where does the search uh, issue stand at this point well uh, I don't know of any active searches but I can tell you the kind of pressure they are putting on this family I spoke with Lindsay Crawlson Tommy's wife today she said when the agent came to arrest her father-in-law the female agent pulled her aside afterwards and said, Lindsay, we are not going away. We're going to keep arresting people, and once we've finished putting everybody in jail, we're then going to take the children. This comes out of this Hank or this Tommy, uh, you know, arrest from falling asleep at the, you know, at the bus stop. The local child welfare workers are now investigating him for that possible child endangerment. So they have a, a bit of leverage here, Pat, and they're going to keep using it until they get what they think people know. Uh, Art Harris, certainly the cops would have gone and found out what party happened and who was there and questioned every one of those people. They have, and uh, Pat, they have talked to people thinking at some point they found the party, they found a witness, and, and then it turns out that the memory isn't right. As one detective told me, Pat, 
this is like interviewing a rock. People do not remember. There's so much drugs in this community that if they find someone who can possibly testify, how will they hold up on the stand? Big problem. But Harris, what are the new leads? Any? Uh, well, not really, Pat, but I can tell you uh, that that night, uh, you know, this is, you got to realize, this is a 17-year-old girl who has no real world experience so you know she's looking uh, you know, assuming her story is true she's looking around the, uh, the the trailer she's freaked out that gosh the father's gonna come home she better find Haley she goes outside she looks around what did she do I mean she's obviously in a panic I know she called her mother I interviewed her mother but but this is a a very very dysfunctional family with very little education and you have to factor that in that their reactions are not the perfect reactions that we think people should have